Hello, people of God. It's good to be back with you once again and to open God's Word together. And we want to look again at Exodus chapter 30 and get back into uh, the instructions for the tabernacle. And here we have literally the last little bit of instruction about what's to go into the construction of the tabernacle. And the last thing that's mentioned is the anointing oil and the incense. So I'm reading from chapter 30 of the book of Exodus, beginning at verse 22 and reading through the end of the chapter. And let's pay careful attention for this is God's own word. The Lord said to Moses, take the finest spices of liquid myrrh, 500 shekels, and of sweet-smelling cinnamon, half as much, that is 250, and 250 of aromatic cane, and 500 of cassia, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, and a hint of olive oil, and you shall make of these a sacred anointing oil, blended as by the perfumer. It shall be a holy anointing, anointing oil. With it you shall anoint the tent of meeting and the ark of the testimony and the table and all its utensils and the lampstand and its utensils and the altar of incense and the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils and the basin and its stand. You shall consecrate them that they may be most holy. Whatever touches them will become holy. You shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may serve me as priests. And you shall say to the people of Israel, it shall be my holy anointing oil throughout your generations. It shall not be poured on the body of an ordinary person, and you shall make no other like it in composition. It is holy, and it shall be holy to you. Whoever compounds any like it, or whoever puts any of it on an outsider, shall be cut off from his people. The Lord said to Moses, Take sweet spices, stacta and ancha, and galbanum, sweet spices with pure frankincense, of each there shall be an equal part, and make an incense blended as by the perfumer, seasoned with salt, pure and holy. You shall beat some of it very small, and put part of it before the testimony in the tent of meeting where I shall meet with you. It shall be most holy for you. And the incense that you shall make according to its composition, you shall not make for yourselves. It shall be for you holy to the Lord. Whoever makes any like it to use as a perfume shall be cut off from his people. Thus far the reading of God's word, may he bless it to us. I can never read this passage without thinking of seeing in a uh, Christian books, bookseller and, you know, they have all kinds of other stuff for sale too, kind of evangelical bookstore type thing in a catalog. And they were, they were proclaiming you could buy oil that had been made according to this recipe and incense that had been made according to this recipe. And it was sort of touting, you know, you could, you could have it and you could know what it was like to have that, that oil and that, and that spice and you could use it as incense or whatever. And I thought, I'm not sure the person who put this together as a, as a for sale item to the church read the passage very carefully because it wasn't supposed to be used for other things. And so it's hard for me to read this passage and not think of just sort of chuckling at that catalog um, about those things. There's nothing holy about these things anymore. Their, their usage has passed away with the fulfillment of Christ, but it still seemed to me a strange thing to go to the Word and to make these things and then use them when the Word specifically says you're not to use them on anything but the temple. Uh, that's all just free information, nothing really to do with our text. Uh, what we want to do is kind of think about this instruction as it comes to us and think about what it says to God's people um, about uh, holiness and anointing for a certain purpose. And really we could think about this as talking about reminding God's people that his priests and the things in the temple were anointed and accepted by God. Um, this is the, the oil that's to be used to consecrate things for the tabernacle's use, uh, also for the priests as well, and it's also the incense that's to be used as part of the tabernacle worship. And so the first thing Moses tells them is how they're to make it. They give us the component parts, the ingredients that go in. Um, I don't know if I read any of those spices correctly. Um, I don't know my spices very well. I was following the the time-honored Bible reading principle, which is if you get to a word you don't know, you try to pronounce it one time and then keep going. Don't stop. Just keep going. Uh, you might have gotten it all wrong, but stopping will just make it worse. Um, that's also a free piece of information for the devotional. Um, so the, the, the ingredients are very clear. God makes it very clear how these things are to be made for them, and then makes it very clear how these things are to be used. Right? The anointing oil is to be used to consecrate the tabernacle and all of its furnishings. 
um, which we read about in verses 26 to 29. Um, and also the priests are to be consecrated uh, with this anointing oil. Um, and the incense that is to be made here is the incense that will be burned um, on the altar of incense outside of the most holy place. Um, and so we see that God tells them how they're to make these things, how they're to use those, these things, and he also tells them how they are not to misuse them. Um, they may be only, only may be used for the purpose that God has intended them. Um, anyone who uses them for any other purpose will be excommunicated. Uh, that's what it means to be cut off from the people. Um, if, if you use these things in a way that God has not told you to use them, then you're cut off from God's people. Um, and God gave important pictures to his people in these, in these two items. What does the anointing oil bring to our mind? Well, it represents being dedicated and inaugurated to God's service. Um, that was true of the tent and all of its furnishings. It wasn't suitable in, just in and of itself to function. Uh, the same thing was true of the priests who received their anointing. Uh, they're, they're being acknowledged in this that it requires an anointing to be inaugurated and dedicated to the service of the Lord. It's by God's anointing, with his particular anointing, special only for this purpose, that all of these things become holy. And without God's anointing, they aren't, they aren't holy. They're not suitable for this purpose. Um, everything that is touched by this oil becomes holy, and then everything that touches the holy things becomes holy. Um, this is an anointing that can only be undone, only can be done by God. Um, it cannot be done in any other way. So this oil cannot be applied except as God has commanded it to the pe things and the people God has commanded it to be applied to. Um, anything that is touched by this oil that is not specifically inaugurated and dedicated by God's command will be cut off from God's people. Um, instead of the oil functioning to separate things for God and make them holy, if you use it for another person, that person or that thing becomes separated from God. Um, and so there's a very serious use of this oil that's, that's given here. And it's similar with the incense. Uh, there's only one formula. It has to be made a certain way to be pleasing to God. It's to be made a particular way if it's offered on the altar of incense. Um, and remember, the altar of incense was where you would put incense and the smoke would go up before the Lord and it was supposed to be done at the same time there was the, alt, the, the daily sacrifice going on in the courtyard on the bronze altar. And so that was to symbolize the sweet-smelling aroma going up from that sacrifice to the Lord. So while the sacrifice was going on outside in the courtyard on the bronze altar, there would be a sacrifice of incense going on on uh, the, the gold altar inside the holy place right before the most holy place. Um, and those, those were supposed to correspond to one another. But God is teaching them here there's only one formula for the incense that will be pleasing in my that will be a pleasing aroma to me. That will be pleasing in my sight. Only one kind of offering. So there's only one kind of formula that will anoint people and make them holy. There's only one kind of formula that will be acceptable as a pleasing aroma to God, uh, connecting the worshiper to God through the sacrifice and through prayer. And if this mixture is used for anything else, the person doing it will be cut off from God's people. It's un unacceptable to God and it's unheard, right? So if there's a connection between the sacrifice in the, in the courtyard and the sacrifice of incense and between the altar sacrifice being acceptable and the incense being sweet smelling to the Lord, representing the prayers of God's people going up with the sacrifice, then what is the message here? If you don't do it according to God's formula, your, unex your sacrifice is unacceptable to God. Your prayers are not heard for, by God. Um, you're doing something that's in totally wrong. And what is the picture that God is meaning to see us to see here? There's only one formula by which you can be anointed. There's only one incense that is pleasing to God. It's a picture of exclusivity. There's one and only way to be anointed and made holy. There's one and only way to have a sweet smelling aroma before the Lord. Only that oil can do the work of making holy. Only that incense is pleasing to the Lord, and any other mixture will end up with separation from God. Um, and sadly, Nadab and Abihu find that out in their own deaths by offering strange fire to the Lord, offering an incense that's unauthorized before the Lord. We don't know that they did it according to the wrong formula, but we know that they didn't do it according to the plan that God had given them, and the Lord struck them down 
for offering strange fire to him. Uh, this is something we're meant to take very seriously. There's only one way to do these things that's pleasing to the Lord. And what is all of this reminding us of? It's reminding us that there is only one way to approach God. Um, there's only one thing that will make you holy. There's only one thing that will make you acceptable in God's, in God's presence. That's the, the picture, the symbolism that's being communicated to God's people. There's only one formula, and all others are unacceptable. Um, or using this in an unauthorized way is unacceptable. You have to use it according to the recipe that God gives you in the way that he commands you to do it. Otherwise, it will result in you being cut off from God. I remember a number of years ago when Muhammad Ali died, one of the things that they uh, did in his funeral was make it really, they said they wanted it to be an interfaith event. So there were Muslim imams, there were Jewish rabbis, there were Roman Catholic priests. Um, and one of the things, one of the messages that they were trying to convey by this service is that we all believe in the same God and that we're all headed to the same place. And so all of these religious leaders were there to kind of, to testify to that. We're all, we all believe in the same God. We're all headed to the same place. That was sort of the purpose of the story. God's tabernacle is not teaching that. It's not teaching us that we're all headed to the same place and there are many, we all believe in the same God. There are many ways to get there. It's not true. You don't come to God in Christ's name. You don't come to God. There's only one formula. There's only one anointing that makes you holy. There's only one sacrifice that's pleasing to God. Only one, one, formula one offering that makes your prayers acceptable to him that makes your your prayers heard before god um, and all of this exclusivity in the tabernacle was pointing to the exclusivity of our lord jesus christ that you only have access to the father through him right jesus was very clear about that in his earthly life john 14 6 i am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me and this exclusivity in the tabernacle was trying to make that clear. There's only one anointing that can make you holy. There's only one way for your prayers to be acceptable in the sight of God. Um, and that was Jesus' message. That was the message of, the, of his apostles that he sent into the world. Um, in Acts 4, 11 and 12, we remember, we read, This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name given under heaven among men by which we must be saved. Um, Martin Luther famously said, He who will not see God in the faith, face of Jesus Christ beholds only the devil. If you, don't want, if you want to see God and you don't want to see him through Jesus, the, the, the thing you think you're seeing is not God, it's the devil. The only way to see the Father is through the Son. He is the only way, right? The way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. That's the reality that Jesus proclaims. That the, it's the anointing of Christ's spirit that can make holy or there's no anointing at all. If you're not anointed by him, you're not holy and you're cut off from the people of God. It's the acceptable sacrifice of Christ. It's the intercession of Christ or there is no sacrifice for sins and God does not hear your prayers. It's through Christ or not at all. Uh, he is the only way we have access to God. Um, but the wonderful truth is, al is also there as well. If by grace we believe in Jesus Christ, then we have been anointed by his Holy Spirit and we have access to God. Um, if by faith we have become participants in the acceptable sacrifice of Christ, then our sins are atoned for and our prayers are heard. Through his mediation they come to God the Father. And that's why faith in Jesus makes all the difference and, and why it's so important to understand there isn't just one place that we're all headed no matter what we do or what, no matter what we believe. All roads do not lead to the Father. There's only one way to the Father. Um, right? And Jesus warns us, we have to enter by the narrow gate. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life and few find it. Um, but if you don't go that way, then you're going down the broad road that leads to destruction. Um, there's only one name given among men by which we must be saved, and it's the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we can be thankful if we know the Lord Jesus Christ and have been given the gift of his Holy Spirit, that we know that our prayers are heard because they're offered in Jesus' name and carried by the Father to the Father by him. And we know that we have access to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
so we can be thankful to our to our Lord and Savior Jesus who has made us anointed and accepted so that we can approach God the Father and live with him in blessedness forever. What a privilege. Let's pray and thank Jesus for his work. Our Father in heaven, we're thankful that we can come to you and that we can come to you in Jesus' name and that we know because we have come in that name that you've given to us and revealed to us that we know that you hear our prayers and they come to you through his mediation. We know that we are accepted in your sight because of his sacrifice and that we are holy because we've been anointed by his spirit. Lord, we pray that you would help us to see the exclusivity and importance of the Lord Jesus Christ, to know that he is the only way uh, that we can have access to you, that there is no other name given among men by which we must be saved. And we pray that those who currently think they see you in other religions and other ways would be made to see that they are not beholding you, but only the devil, and that they would be turned by your mercy and through the power of your spirit to see your son and to have life in his name and access to you through him. We thank you that we can pray in his name. We pray that you would continue to help us to do all that you've commanded us to do, uh, that we would uh, follow your law and obey it. We pray that you would forgive us where we have failed to do your will. We pray that you would forgive us for the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and that you would fill us with your Spirit, that we might be dedicated to you and offer ourselves as living sacrifices in gratitude for all you've done for us in your Son. Hear us and help us in these things, we pray, for we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, people of God, it's been good to spend this time with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again.